I am working it today at the National Weather Service in Pocatello. I'm here with Audra Moore. She's one of the meteorologists on staff here. Uh, Audra, what are we going to be doing today? Brett, thanks for coming out. We're super excited to have you. We're going to work on a couple of different things. So we're going to have you issue a tornado warning, a winter weather advisory or winter storm warning. All this is going to be in practice mode, so don't worry. Nothing will go out into the world as far as those warnings go. Okay, well, I'm excited to learn more about it. Let's go try it. We're going to issue a, a fake weather alert. Yes. Is that one of the things we're doing? <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. I want to see how you do it. We'll go through all the steps and we'll pretend that we've pushed it out into the world. We are going to change the product type to tornado. Okay. <laughs> so that now lets it know, okay, we're gonna be issuing a tornado warning. Let's say this kind of green dot here is our tornado storm. Again, obviously we don't we don't have any tornadoes out there today. <laughs> yeah. So we drag this little this little circle piece here, we're gonna put it right on to the quote unquote tornado. Okay. We're gonna go back in time just a little bit to see where that cell has been and where it's going. You'll notice that little dot, it moved way too far. It's out of our area, so we gotta move it back in. So then we can come back and click track, and that snaps that polygon a little bit more into the direction that we have told it that that cell is moving. We don't have any extra counties in there that we didn't want in the warning. So then we can kind of scroll through these tags here. We can select a few different things and then the program will generate the tornado warning for us. And on this screen over here, it opens up our, our text workstation. Since we selected a 30 minute duration, um, it's gonna go until 2 p.m. Um, we've got the tornado, half dollar size hail, radar indicated. So everything looks good. So if, uh -huh. if you're not in the warned area, you won't get that warning on your weather radio. If we have kind of a longer duration or a more lead time alert, like a winter weather advisory or a winter storm warning or some other ones, um, yeah. we issue that through a different program called Hazard Services. When you start to see these blues and these greens and these yellows and kind of oranges, that means we've got higher snow totals coming in. So say we need to issue a winter weather advisory, Burley, Pocatello, and Idaho Falls zones. And then you right click when you're done, it's kind of outlined these spots. Um, we gotta change our category to winter weather, our type to then a winter storm warning in this case. We can leave it just automatically generate from what we currently have in our forecast grids. We can also click those ourselves. So we'll click delay travel. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe we'll have, I know, below a quarter mile visibility. We can click that on the impacts one up there too. We're ready to go with that. Then we can click preview. So then after that, we would click issue all. Can I click it? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> There's our winter storm warning that you issued. So How do you determine there was half an inch of rain on? There's a couple different things, and like we can go outside and I'll show you one of them. You see it says Pocatello Regional Airport. That is data coming directly from our ASOS about sky conditions, visibility, present weather. Well, there is no present weather, so that's blank right now. That present weather sensor then will say, oh, it's raining. And so then it starts collecting that rain. It's, it's got an apparatus on it that actually collects moisture. Um, and then we've got one out back that we can look at. Okay. This is our rain gauge. Um, the eight inch ones are like the official National Weather Service you know, certified <laughs> rain gauges. Yeah, I'm amazed at the, sim the simplicity of the method. Mm -hmm. Inside, we've got all this technical stuff. <laughs> Outside, it's just, no, we've got Here's a snowboard. Here's our eight inch rain gauge and we've got, a, yep. we've got an empty, an empty can. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's play pretend. <laughs> Put some water in there. Say this had been the liquid left over from snow earlier in the day that melted and now it's 10 o'clock at night, we've gone out to grab it and it's refrozen. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have to melt it somehow. Right. <laughs> because we can't really measure the liquid content of the ice while it's still ice. So we can come in here, we can get some hot water. We have to know how much we're putting in because obviously this did not fall today. So we'd have to go and we'd have to measure this amount of water. 0.69, so this is hot water that's gonna melt our ice. Yeah. We can pour it in here. All right, you wanna do the honors? Yeah. Pouring from in here into, into this? Yeah. And then watch that you, yeah, don't pour out through here. Then you measure it again. And then we measure it again. With the added half an inch or whatever it was. Yep, I'll let you have the honors. 
Okay, so we were at 0. 0.69 yep. before. Uh, yeah, I'd say we're right about 0. 0.81. 0. 0.81. So then we would take 0. 0.81 minus the 0. 0.69. So that's... So you know, a, t a tenth of an inch of water. So yeah, basically we got a tenth of an inch of rain that day. I see. Well, Audra, thanks so much for showing me the ropes a little bit what the daily job is like. I could talk to you all day about, hey. about that kind of stuff. Yeah, there is a lot to go over. <laughs> We're glad that you came out and, and got to kind of see what it's like to be a meteorologist for a day. Well, thank you again, Audra. This has been great. And thank you for watching. <laughs>